This episode was recorded on October 4th, 2020 at around 1 p.m. Some of the information that was said in this episode has changed, including the pre president being discharged from Walter Reed Hospital. Please enjoy this first episode of The Hallows at Noon. Hello and welcome to The Hallows at Noon. This is our first episode. Um, my name is Liam Noonan, and I'm here with... I'm Rocky Hollows, and you can barely see me with the light shining. That, that's okay. We're only going to use audio anyway. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so this is a brand new podcast, which may or may not continue, depending on how well this goes. Um, we are planning to release episodes based on coronavirus debate, uh, the coronavirus, the debate, um, Among Us, Halloween, among any other, many other things. Uh, we also work, we also worked at Amazon, so we have some stories to tell. Yep. And... Who knows what, what else happens after that? So basically what my, co my awesome co-host is saying is that this show is about everything and anything. So it's not just one topic of discussion each week. It's everything. It can be anything depending on what happens. It could be any subject, a holiday, how-tos, news, updates, everything and anything. Okay, so the first official topic about on this podcast is of course president trump's recent diagnosis of covid-19 way to start easy <laughs> yep um it, it just it just happens to be something that needs to be taken care of um he was recently diagnosed with covid-19 early Friday morning, and as of recording, he is still in the hospital, expected to come out tomorrow morning. It's crazy, honestly. Yes. I think it's because they're literally, um, I think it's because he's president, so they have to have him in office sooner. So if there is a vaccine, they're going to have to test it on Trump, which is a good thing for all of us in a way, because... I think this is the the perfect way to test out to see if this virus works or not is on a presidential and or government official because if it works then we're all cured we're all then it'll be good for all of us and it will we'll all be saved. If it doesn't and there's really bad side effects then the country's saved. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um just to let you guys know I am a registered democrat. I think Rocky is registered as well uh i'm actually registered as a republican but honestly i decided i'm not voting this year yeah. because of after everything that's happened and the electoral with the electoral college they really don't deserve my vote anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so now with that out of the way we we like to wish the president a speedy recovery. Him and his wife. Yes, especially both, his wife. They both <laughs> tested positive uh, at around the same time. Yeah. No, since all of that is out, as well as the entire Trump team, include and that even includes Chris Christie, who was also diagnosed within the last few days. Speedy recovery to him as well, and the rest of the White House staff, Trump's family, all of that. We're not, we may have some uh, uh, biased slash unbiased opinions on this podcast as well as other podcasts that exist, but we're not monsters. We're all humans. Mm -hmm. So be recovered to everybody. Okay, so now that's all out of the way, yes. um, our second topic today is going to be on the debate that just happened the other day. This should, this should be very fun. Yes. <laughs> There was a lot that went into that 90 minutes 
I have about five and a half pages of notes. Oh my. <laughs> plus, plus, um, some things also about. I have an article from the BBC that I'd like to quote. Mm-hmm. According to the BBC, it was the night to the American democracy hit rock. It pulled in 65 million viewers. They said that Biden won the debate. He took the high road and said that he would respect the results of the election. And they also quoted him, which is my favorite quote from the entire debate, show up and vote. He cannot stop you. Ooh, shade. That's funny. Yeah. um, He being in reference to Donald Trump. Um, who also reportedly ripped up off uh, U.S. Postal Service mailboxes from neighborhoods all across the, all across the United States of America, apparently except Florida, where he won the original popular vote. Yep. So let's break this debate down. Um, of course, I didn't see it. I actually didn't watch it live because I don't have cable TV. But instead, I was watching Among Us live plays, specifically uh, Cassie, aka Gloom, from YouTube. But I did get live updates as it was happening from Liam. So, because we wanted to put this up on the first episode. So, yeah. <laughs> um, first off, right out of the bait, the first 10 minutes turned into a, a total shit show. Wonderful. Um, Biden exclaimed at the beginning, my party is me. Donald Trump was like, yeah, not according to Kamala Harris. I think she's a chameleon, but hey, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it was supposed to be six 15 minute conversations and two minute answers to the questions that Chris Wallace, the moderator for the debate, asked both candidates. He could have done a better job as a moderator. Honestly, he probably could have done a better job and like not let Trump keep interrupting Biden because you're here to debate. If you feel attacked, don't be in politics. Mm-hmm. So, um, The first debate, the first topic of the debate was the Supreme Court and the replacement of the notorious RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, Now, in recent days, Trump has decided to replace Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg with a conservative judge named uh, Amy Coney Barrett. Oh, yeah, I like her. Yeah, see, I think it was really dumb because Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, she was was a very amazing, amazing politician with what she did. She brought equality to women, the LGBT community, community, and many people who felt like they didn't have a voice. And her last dying wish was that don't replace me until the election. And what did Trump do? Replaced her right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like, I actually like the new the new woman who's replacing her. I forgot her name already. I'm drawing a blank. But because she actually sounds human. And that maybe that would be good for the White House staff because, you know, Ruth Gary Ginsburg, she was human. She had many human views, and I think maybe this will actually be really good for the country in general. Yes, but um, with her placement on the Supreme Court, Republicans, the majority of the Supreme Court, where they can then decide on things like Roe v. Wade and abortion and women's rights and make those illegal Mm. i mean abortion is a really hectic topic to discuss because no matter what happens and somebody's gonna get hurt Um, i I should know 
the next thing the next thing this is going great so far <laughs> that i wrote um that i have here in my notes is that biden could not get two words out without trump interrupting him this is a repeat <laughs> at all um have we seen this before like trump v clinton and like i mean i mean i'm kind of the same way in a way not and not the, the fact that i'm voted under republic i'm like under republican mm -hmm. but like i'm a Taurus, so it's the same thing but uh you know i think he should have definitely given trump a set more trump should have definitely given biden more time to speak because you have your own time to speak time's up yeah shut so mute his mic already like they could have done a bet the moderator should have done a better job honestly with muting trump's mic when he's not supposed to answer a question yeah chris wallace did a terrible job moderating trump um trump now he basically said that after the debate he wanted to try and be um he wanted to try and be invisible to both candidates and you really needed someone to tie Trump back from the mic. It was that bad. Um, yep. Trump demanded to know what Biden would have chosen as replacement for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, Biden was not answering that question at all he basically said to let the people vote Agreed. um and that was that the second topic would be the coronavirus where biden claimed that trump had no plan um he, he even quoted the president as saying it is as it is. Trump then would say Biden wouldn't have closed the country for another two months. He also quoted, they gave you good press. They gave me bad press. And he brought up something about the H1N1 That's virus. That's irrelevant. Exactly. It, it's okay. irrelevant. It's kind of dumb to bring up a a completely different virus that has absolutely zipped to do and zilch to do with coronavirus. Matter of fact, I think maybe Trump could have handled the outbreak and containing it a lot better than he did. But maybe now, maybe here's my two cents, and you can interpret this any way you want because this is my opinion on it. But maybe now that Trump actually has COVID 19, maybe he'll actually know how to respond to it better from a first person point of view standpoint of what it actually feels like um the next thing that biden brought up was the bleach comments um it, it was that point was irrelevant as well um and to close out the topic trump insulted biden by saying that he graduated the lowest of his class, Delaware State University. And he was like, don't you ever bring up the word smart to me, Joe. Hold on, I'm getting a call. <laughs> um, that was low. Yeah, we could edit it. We can edit it out. Um, no, I was, I was saying. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say the fact that you bring that in, like, his education, and at one point even his kid who died in the military, that was really low of Trump, underhanded, and a president should not have to stoop that low to prove your points. Like, I get it, it's a debate, but lines you should not cross. And they, and you know, and he knows it anyway. Something tells me that Trump fears that he's gonna lose the midterm election anyway, so he's saying he's in effort mode. You know? it, it, it's not a midterm it's a plus it's a presidential election that's what i meant sorry <laughs> i like i said i'm not voting this year so what, what do i know i didn't even watch yeah. this debate <laughs> i'm going um, off cliff notes the 
not to bring this, bring it all out. Um, I want to bring out some more points in the topic race and reckoning. Um, Biden said that one in 500 African Americans would die due to Corona. Yeah, they, they are statistically more, they, they, it's, the odds are worse for them when they get corona. Well, yes, but most of the deaths I heard yeah. from an undis- unidentified source that will remain anonymous is that I think that most of the hospitals are seeing people die who had corona in, a, in them, but they died from something else. For instance, a coworker we had at Amazon, his name was uh, George, rest in peace, yeah. died of lung cancer, and their and the hospital put on their autopsy reports that it was coronavirus, and that is really messed up. And I think maybe they're trying to do it for money from yeah. the government. But what am I to put? It's a random conspiracy theory, am I right? I mean, never know. It could be right, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, even though Chris Wallace, the moderator did a terrible job at moderating. Um, He did ask, you know, very good questions. He brought up Breonna Taylor. He brought up- Say her name. They brought up um, Trump's taxes, which were recently released. Um, Biden said that violence, police brutality, is never appropriate it really isn't trump then stated the racist race sensitivity um training is racist it really isn't that was literally my favorite quote of the night (laughs) because that's like isn't that like training like to not have like racial profiling stuff like kind of like like i'm probably really off on this because this is like like, but that was still my favorite quote of the night. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? Like, uh, it's basically for police officers to um, do more community service, mm. basically. Yeah, and about like the whole like defund the police thing. Like, I think they're blowing it out of proportion. Like, I know police brutality is bad. But not all police officers are like that. Not all EMTs and not everyone you call through 911 is going to be racially biased to get racially like profiling people. Like, I don't think they should blame all the cops and all the emergency services because not all of them are bad. And I actually know an EMT who is proof of that, living proof of that. So yeah, actually a few. So yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you want me to introduce this one? Yeah. Okay. So, so Biden's t- Biden's take, right? Yeah. No, this is uh. Yeah. This. One. Yeah. So Biden was like, "We can take this on and defeat systematic racism. Why does everything have to connect back to COVID? Why does it? Right? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, sure, it's the number one thing that's bad with this year, and. Yes, it sucks. We all hate wearing masks. I know Liam hates it at Amazon now because everything is masked and it's impossible to, to like do social distancing, but they're trying, you know, but not everything problem this year should be test, tied back to COVID because not everything is COVID related. Yeah. And the biggest takeaway from the whole debate was Trump's comments about the Trump the Proud Boys saying to stand back, stand aside. Um, as he was questioned about him condemning um, white supremacy, he did not condemn white supremacy. I think, yeah, that's definitely a huge problem with the way this country works is the fact that it's always been a white supremacy. People, they've actually, this is why, like, people have been, like, socially fighting for equality and stuff, you know? Like, for instance, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, fight for equality of women amongst the men. 
people like Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream that one day we could all coexist. When I see friends, I have friends who are black and when I see and when I see them, I don't think of them as my black friend. I just think of them as my friend. And that's the way it should be in this country. You know? Yeah. Um, Trump also said, I want to see peace. Something has to be done about Antifa, the terrorist group that he's been going after for weeks. Okay. Sorry. Donald Trump. Antifa is the anti-fascist group. Oh my god. That's what it stands for. Only 2020 people. Yeah. Only 2020. <laughs> um he he doesn't get that he's a fascist. Oh, so Trump. Oh, Trump. Yeah. Trump. Wow. <laughs> he doesn't get it at all. Um yeah. The last thing that was said in the debate were Trump and Biden's records. Trump basically said that he filled President Barack Obama's openings within the judicial system. And he said, you can't be a good president with and a good vice president with 128 justices to fill. This was the part where uh, Joe Biden, where Bo Biden was insulted and Biden was like, my son was not a hero, was not a loser. Sorry. I can't uh, believe he even brought his son up in this. Like, isn't that, that's the son who died in the military, right? Yeah. That's really messed up to like insult his late son who passed away fighting for this country like that's you say you're fighting for the troops that's really dis really really fucking disrespectful because he literally put his own life on the line and lost it to defend the freedoms that we have today and you're as a president that makes you really look like the biggest asshat in the entire country or let alone the world you know because you because as a president you'd expect a lot better you know, mm -hmm. and when you insult someone who's fought for the country, for the rights, for the fact that you're even in office because people like him have been fighting for our own freedoms, the fact that you're still in, for the fact that you're still in power, and that's that's really shameful of a president and really disrespectful. Yeah, to get the full quote, it's my son was not a loser. The people left there in Iraq were heroes. Um, and in his kind of final statements, Biden said to show up and vote. He cannot stop you. Um, yes. That's great. <laughs> they were battling about, um, mail-in voting and the 2016 election all night so biden had a couple moments where he would look into the camera to address the american people like a president and say show up and vote he cannot stop you that's such great shade i have to applaud that from biden mm -hmm. the fact that he's fighting trump after like what four years of him sure boosting the economy but not doing but like and then the overuse of twitter was really unprofessional for presidents mm -hmm. and that goes along saying i think the fact that biden was actually able to clap back like this was beast mode that was really really great oh and would you look at that they just posted breaking news <laughs> yeah breaking news <laughs> it was trump's it was a update on trump's coronavirus Diagnosis. That's ironic. We were just talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> um, Trump said in his final statement that there has been no transition from when him and the first the first lady Melania came down the escalator. Um, he claimed that mail in voting is a fraud and that this whole election was a shame. 
Now, this episode is probably going to be up just in time for the vice president debate. Mm -hmm. Or if it happens, um, the second presidential debate. Yes. Or at, or at least we'll try. Yes. We're like working. We're actually balancing between an education at a, at a at, we're actually at the same college, but we're educate balancing school. He's balancing work and I'm balancing mostly school. <laughs> so that we're still going to bring you the latest as it comes out uh, periodically. And along with other fun things in this show, mm -hmm. like I said, it's not just about politics on what was this one called again? What do uh, we call this the show? Hallows. <laughs> the, Hallows the Hallows at, at noon. noon. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I, we both kind of collabed on the name. But yeah. yeah. So what's the next topic on the show, Liam? Um, you wanted to do some WWE, WWE Perfect. wrestling. Perfect timing. Um, we are going to try to talk about WWE wrestling every week. Mm -hmm. It it all depends on you know how much how much time we have. Yes. So uh, yeah, like that's one thing that I'm really passionate about personally. Like screw politics, I don't care. But like when it comes to WWE, I am a card carrying member of what they call fans call the WWE universe. So if you're a WWE universe fan, this is where you want to go for slight opinions on what's like the woman's edition, the pay per views, when to watch it, where to watch it. I've had the WWE Network subscription for two and a half years now. No, actually, th no, wait, no, no, uh, two years now, actually, yes. Came with my boy, my relationship with my boyfriends, mm -hmm. actually. But yeah. Oh, so it's me, right? Yeah. Okay. So I figured we could start with, uh, well, I didn't see Raw, so, but I know that, uh, but looking at the results, it looks like Robert Roode returned this week on Monday Night Raw, and there was a WWE champion, uh, heavyweight championship match against Drew McIntyre, who is currently the champion, and Robert Roode, and he defeated Robert Roode via pinfall. So yes, one, two, three, tap out, ding, ding, ding. And the Mysterio, there's also the fact that the Mysterio family, family is going through a dramatic storyline between them and their daughter, Aaliyah Mysterio, and also the disciples, the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, and Buddy Murphy, who is a disciple. Right now, Aaliyah had interfered with the match against uh, Dominic, with the of Dominic Mysterio versus Murphy and inter, had interfered into the match and it was bad because he really wants to use a kendo stick and didn't. So Murphy defeated Dominic with a distraction from Leah via pinfall. So yes. Also Asuka uh defeat def the uh bleh, I can't say anything. I'm so passionate I can't make up words. Asuka defended her Raw Women's Championship against Zelina Vega, who recently broke up the, um, I don't know what their tag team was called, but it was with uh, the uh, El Idolo Andrade Cien Almas and, oh, okay, thanks, uh, against, with like uh, Andrade and Angel Garza. And he, uh, and she actually stopped being their manager and started with singles, com singles competition. So now Zelina Vega is finally fighting for her own name. And she actually had a re a match against Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship title at Ch Class of Champions last Sunday. Defeat got the and then Asuka retained both that day that on that pay per view and on Raw that week. Um, there's a lot of matches on here, so I'm probably gonna skip some. But we also just saw the debut of Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, all who were drafted from SmackDown. Friday Night SmackDown, which is on Fox. Um, and they defeated La the tag team of Lana and Natalia via pinfall. Kevin Owens is now back and defeated Aleister Black in a match via disqualification. The 24-7 championship, um, there was like R-Truth, Tr who is currently the champion, defeated Drew Gulak and Akira Tozawa via pinfall. And the Hurt Business were defeated were defeated by Apollo Crews, Ricochet, and Mustafa Livia Pinfall. And um, and also there was a clip on YouTube of Bianca Belair doing track and field because she is the fastest. She's the EST of WWE, and you can't whoop her. 
You know you can't whoop her. She's the EST. But the thing is, I don't even watch Raw. I just look at the recaps on their YouTube channel. You can tune into Monday Night Raw, WWE, every Monday night at from 8 to 10 p.m. on the USA Network. The show I really watch is NXT because they're the new star, the new stars, the second, ro- the third roster. They're the future. The future is iconic. No, I'm just kidding. They broke up. Uh, but yeah. So now when it comes to NXT, uh, Adam Cole called out the former de- Raw, super- Raw superstar while Kushida destroyed a former NXT Cruiserweight champion. I didn't watch NXT this week, but I watched the week before that. Uh, like I said, this is uh, NXT's Wednesday nights on USA, same channel, 8 p.m. to 10. And the current, I know for uh, Io Shirai, her women's cha- NXT Women's Championship, uh, uh, she is going to defend that takeover coming up against can- the pint-sized poison, Candice LeRae. I liked her old gimmick better, though, personally, and I think Dakota Kai should have another shot at the at the woman's champ just in case because Dakota Kai won future NXT star of the year, and she is actually one of my, my favorite NXT competitor, and she deserves a lot of opportunities, as does everybody. But you know the authority if you're a card-carrying WWE Universe member. You know the authority, you know, the McMahon family, Triple H, all them. They're always playing favorites, storylines and all. So I hope that Dakota Kai gets an opportunity. And I also wish Tegan Knox a special, a special message for Tegan Knox. I hope she has a speedy recovery with her recent leg injury from Candice LeRae, who pushed a cart against her leg and destroyed her surgically repaired knee almost a year after Dakota Kai ruined it, ruined her, wrecked up her knee during war games. Oh, and the first match was apparently an epic clash between Shotzi Blackheart and Dakota Kai. And uh, she currently, Dakota Kai is in a faction with Raquel Gonzalez, who is pretty much the uh, powerhouse of the tag team. And But the funny thing is, Rhea Ripley came to, actually came to Shotzi Blackheart's um, rescue and... Yeah, so Shotzi actually, I think Shotzi came up with the win, but I could be wrong. I think she did, though, actually. Yeah, but I'm hoping that they have a match between Raquel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley soon, because when you see two huge powerhouses, probably the same height of Liam Liam in, in height, they're really tall people. And when you see two powerhouses go at it, that's a must-see event. Like, I've always wanted to see Karma return and go up against Nia Jax, but sadly, Karma, aka Awesome Kong, is now part of AEW, so sad to say we won't see her return there anytime soon. I don't have much on NXT this week because I didn't watch it, but I can give you a few things on SmackDown. SmackDown is actually not on USA, but it's on Fox every Friday night at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So after Clash of Champions... Uh, Roman Reigns defeat uh, retained his Universal Championship title against Jimmy. Was Jimmy? No, Jey Uso, not Jimmy. I keep missing the Usos up. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and they have seem to have a rematch, but he was called out. He actually was called out by AJ Styles for. I think it, I don't know why, but they were because I didn't see SmackDown. I haven't been keeping up with the main rosters. For a bit but I do know one thing and that Sasha Banks had come return to address what happened between her and the the complete meltdown of her friendship with Bailey who is the current uh Smackdown Women's Championship and I used to be a huge Bailey fan I have the Bailey buddy collectible that you would see in my room in that in a Dave and Buster's mug up in the on my shelf I still have it, even though she completely changed it. She killed the Bailey Buddies a year ago, exactly a year ago from where we are now, with I would seem to be a hedge cutter, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. She killed the Bailey Buddies, turned completely dark and emo. She looks like a Karen right now, actually. 
That's my personal opinion. I've seen her matches on YouTube, and they're like, I want to speak to Bailey's manager. And I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, I do too. But everyone now hates Bailey. She was run from role model to public enemy number one, made many en- enemies between Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, be- you know, especially with when it comes to Lacey Evans, Nikki Cross. Now even, and she betrayed around, uh, and at, uh, what was it? No, was it was not, no, maybe it was SummerSlam. Uh, one of the last pay-per-views, they lost that she and Sasha, Sasha Banks and Bailey lost the tag team titles against Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. And, um, and then uh, we all knew Sasha Banks was going to eventually turn on Bailey, but we didn't think Bailey was going to turn the first move and attack the injured leg putting, and the neck of Sasha Banks. I did not see that coming. Like I saw that feud coming from a mile away and I did not, but I didn't think Bailey was going to strike first. Bailey has become public enemy number one amongst most of the Raw, SmackDown, and NXT women's locker room combined. So I'd love to see Sasha Bank, and it's been confirmed that the next, I think it's Helena Sell's the next pay per view. I could be wrong, but I know that for a fact it's going to be Sasha versus Bailey at the next pay per view. And if it's Helena Sell, I'd love to see Sasha and Bailey go at it at. The hell in a hell in a cell match, so in the steel cage and everything that would be so cool. And that's something that the entire WWE universe would be thrilled about. And I really hope Sasha makes Bailey pay. I don't like her anymore, but other than that, I think that pretty much wraps up. Uh, oh, and one more thing that I have to address here. Um, I heard from on I read somewhere online that. I on Twitch, the WWE is trying to take over Superstars Twitch pages, and I think that's really un- uncalled for of Vince McMahon. I think Vince has been at it this far too long and really needs to retire because all those decisions he's making for the company are is ruining WWE in a way, and it's why it's going down in the ratings against Impact, against AEW, all those other wrestling programs and even Paige called out WWE and was really really mad because what the money she makes off Paige is off the pay off her uh Twitch page uh, Twitch streaming thing is for her. That's a side hustle. That's not WWE. She's not trying to wrestle other gamers, put them in a rampage. She's not doing that. She's on Twitch to play games and have fun and do it as a side hustle. And the for the fact that WWE is trying to take control over these individual people this is them breaking kayfabe this is their actual these actual people no one's going to play a part while trying to play a game you're not going to see Shayna. you might see Shayna baszler scare dakota kai during her stream on twitch which is charlie at charlie girl on a switch you might see Shayna baszler scare dakota kai and on during her live streams because they're roommates alongside jessamine duke and Mia Yim, but you're not going to see Shayna Baszler try to put in a Kahuta clutch during a live stream. That's dangerous because there's no referee, there's no official, there's nothing there. And that's really dumb for them to try to take control of individual Twitch accounts. And that's just my two cents that they should really step off. Vince should know his boundaries and Vince McMahon should step off. And I think that's all for the wrestling update this time. Back to Liam. Uh, that was a lot. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Um, not as much time as the date though, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, we, do, we don't really have like an outro. I mean, we could always put in, we could always slap in social medias, other platforms so you can follow us. Right. Um, uh, I mean, if yeah, yeah. We're, we're still trying to figure this out as we go along. Yeah. I mean, for me, I come from a background of being on a radio station. Shout out to 90.3 WHPC of NASA Community College. I used to work there and have my own show. So kind of have an idea of what this is about and I'm giving ideas here and there. But I think maybe we should go out by like for the episode one by addressing and saying a disclaimer like these opinions are just ours. You don't mm-hmm. have to take them literally and you don't have to be mad at us for how we feel. <laughs> yeah i think something like that <laughs> i think and that's also, actually that's perfect perfect should, way to end we're actually definitely going to we're definitely going to record like a disclaimer or something and but i think we should slap on like 
I uh, like social media, like so we can so you can follow us, find us wherever, where, whenever. Right? What do you think? Yeah, follow us at Rocky Hollows. It's it's Rocky's yeah. Instagram account. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to plug in my YouTube also, and uh, you, you can plug in 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 his YouTube. Yes, my YouTube. You can find me at the FN slash Rocky and Tommy. It's kind of two in one name, but we do. But me, that's for me and my uh, my boyfriend. Not not Liam. I'm yeah. I'm not dating Liam. That's no, you know, that's not yeah. happening. Yeah. Nah, we're just friends. Yeah. But that's me and my boyfriend Tom. We do gaming. We do occasional blog vlogs. We do all that fun stuff. So find us at the FN slash Rocky and Tommy on YouTube. We do occasional uploads, so definitely check us out. And you could follow me at Instagram, I guess. It's my Instagram is dog possessed. That's the tag name. Um yeah, I don't really feel comfortable telling you the rest of my social medias. It's fair. <laughs> it's fair. I mean, for me, I have like this is the one my one thing I want people to actually check out is my youtube so yeah but like other than that don't try to find me you will not find rocky hollows besi anywhere besides youtube and instagram maybe twitch but that's about it like i might do live streams soon and uh that's it i think all right that has been episode one of peace the, that's been episode one of the hollows at noon thank you for tuning in we'll see you guys next time bye bye